Can you see and hear me? Wonderful to have you on board, Olga. We didn't know whether uh, the gods of technology will, would allow us to, <laughs> for you to be uh, here presenting uh, online uh, live. But here you are. I'm very pleased to, uh, that you made it. And I'm very pleased to introduce you to uh, our third and final presenter for today, uh, Olga Koroleva. Um, Olga is, uh, is a London-based artist, curator, an academic researcher, forager and lecturer. Her work honors slow practice and self-care while exploring ways of non-exploitative cohabitation with multiple others on this planet. She works primarily with expanded research cinema and is the founder of the international peer group, The Political Animal. She has previously taught animal theory at the School of Art, Architecture and Design, London Metropolitan University. She is currently a film practice fellow at the Centre for Film and Ethics, Queen Mary University of London. And she will be sharing with us today her paper, um, uh, her work, um, but soft shell, well watching, but I'll leave it uh, to you all that to introduce your work. Thank you so much, Marina. Um, so wonderful to be here today, and I hope technology holds up uh, for my presentation. So today I'm going to show um, two video works and a new um, text piece um, in between the two. So I'm going to try and share my screen now, and hopefully things work as they should. The first video is called Whale Watching, and it has sound. Um, so let me know if anything, um, if it um, works okay. It should be fine now. Mm
I bathe in fluorescent, gooey, pink liquid to keep the microscopic fruiting bodies that bubble up on the surface of my skin every now and then at bay, contemplating my surroundings. My thoughts travel to those cetacean bodies held captive in tanks of chlorinated water, the white beluga whales whose condition is linguistically ameliorated to the status of performer. Look, children, the whales laugh performing for you. Smile, pose, clap your tiny hands before they are strong enough to hold another's tight. Learn to clap in tune to this public display of slow violence. I wonder if it is not our attention that has been displaced by the practices of violent thought. Our children could not be less interested in these painfully slowly deteriorating bodies held in plastic pools and in glass containers, impenetrable for their inhabitants, yet entirely imperceptible for the young curious mind. It has already been misled to believe this is nature. In moments of despair at the state of the world and my own perceived helplessness, I turn to the songs of water. The water sustains, she holds, holds up and holds whole, and the sky ocean beckons, reminding me I am here and I am you. Where does my bath water run from here? And where does it meet the whale waste water? And how long before they join together and circulate back to this unpalatable tap water many consider clean? by mistake of it appearing transparent. Transparency in attention and intention in these conditions are precious and hard to come by. In Slavic folk tales, the reader often meets two kinds of water, one living and the other dead. Such abstract matters were a mystery to me as a child and transparency never a strong suit of our mainstream education. With the storybook open, I would spend countless hours wandering about them, trying to decipher and place these waters that would magically appear in front of the tale's main characters, often at a pivotal point in their story, holding unseen powers and bringing some back from the dead. In contemporary terms, living water is spring water, ocean water, river and lake water, and the day dead water is that which has been boiled. It's living essence evaporated. I am not my body. I am the body of the ocean. I wrote a few months ago in the piece, The Dolphin, whose name I cannot remember, which looks at my experience of DAT, the so-called dolphin assisted therapy, as a teenager. And now, in preparation for this conference, I am asked to pose research questions, not simply talk about my work. But what more can I really ask? To have to know that cetacean and humans' brain, humans, human brains have one origin, and that whales don't belong in human entertainment, that they have cried for help, and that we have not yet heard them clear enough, that the ocean is huge and we have failed her, that the water is wet and softness is strength, kindness, resilience, and it is this that I want to learn and practice. How is the water today? Is it wet? My granddad would joke upon entering the Lake Talcas in the Irundic Mountains in the south of Ewells, every time without fail. Rephrasing his joke, perhaps, I can ask this. How is the water today? Is it living? To see the fish, one must look at the water. Only then, one truly sees the fish, Shunru Suzuki wrote in The Beginner's Mind in 1970. How glad the water must be to finally be whole again. Perhaps when we humans are whole again, we will hear them fully clearly, not to start over, but to start differently. A friend's daughter, then around eight years old, misremembering my name, kept calling me Beluga. How glad I was. I often wonder if she remembers. As I write this with the body displayed by emotional captivity, this body that felt the sea only yesterday. Other othered bodies are landlocked, our closest approximation to an amphibian future reduced to rare individuals floating in a public display, suspended in remnants of food and the rain shedded skin, looking to the audience for an answer. Our shared sensation of captivity is coated opaque, layer after layer, 
to an infinite depth of bright blue piece of paper at the back of the water tank. As I write this, the English language fails me again, reading Robin Wall Kimra talk about indigenous languages that come from the land of her people, I wonder if my own ancestors had not a word for the invisible connection to their land. I wonder what is beluga for encountering a human being in their waters. What is ocean for the extension of her bodies across the waters? That feeling that I feel when I see, when I say that my body is not mine alone to have. What is soft shell turtle for being displaced from home waters or indeed being born into captivity? What is water for being lonely and alone, surrounded by glass and an endless flow of spectators? I check up on my first language, and it's neither animist nor English. A tree is in it, while a leaf is a he, but it so is a chair. The luga is a she, a whale is a he, and so is the ocean. The water is always she, whether living or dead. Infinitely grateful for the rain outside, not my window. I thank the living water every day. Infinitely hopeful, I ask, could our captives ever be so lucky as to encounter the living water again? I'm going to share the second video and it is silent. If it lets me do what I'm trying to do.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Olga. Um, that's, that was wonderful, wonderful presentation. Thank you. Uh, it was interesting to see that the video that had no sound, it had all of us breathing here in the space and uh, doing the soundtrack to the video and also uh, the, raising the question who is looking at whom uh, there.